Welcome back. In this video tutorial, we will take up where we left off in the introduction. As you recall, we had this example of a graphic file from an ACT math test. This JPEG file was opened in the Firebird Graphics Editor. And you see on the left the original image. On the right, we see the tactile graphic image that will be produced. But before we finish the image, fix the labels and emboss it, we really need to work on this a little bit, I think. We have already in the previous edition selected our Phoenix embosser. We've selected 20 dots per inch and we've selected wide braille paper. Just to give you an example of the differences in resolution, if we select 25 dots per inch, you can see we have a much denser, darker line over here because there's more dots available. Selecting the graphic resolution is important, and it does have a lot to do with the original graphic image you're using. Now, if this image had had a lot of dense, shaded area, you would definitely want to go with a lower graphic resolution, because in the finished product, really, 25 dots per inch is about the maximum level that paper can sustain, and heavy shaded areas tend to make the paper soft, almost like tissue. So you know, I tend to opt more towards the lower resolutions if you're getting a suitable result in the right-hand side. Now, if you have an image that's high uh, detail, then the higher resolutions are definitely better. Now, as we mentioned, we have a number of image tools available to us up here on the top row. And again, with the context-sensitive help, highlight the menu and press F1. You may wish to come here and take a look at what each of these varying tools will do for you in the finished product. I've learned somewhat from experience with simple drawings like this that generally where you might think sharpen is the thing to do, that actually will take out dots, generally speaking, more than put them in. So in this case I'm going to undo that. And let's try a Gaussian blur. That's one of my favorite tools in this. And you notice with the blur we achieved a much denser line similar to what we saw in the higher graphic resolution of 25 dots per inch. This looks pretty good to me. I think this will make a good tactile graphic. So once you've decided that you are complete in this section, you like the results you see over there, let's edit that. Pressing the Edit Braille Image radio button will bring up the Braille Editor. I'm going to move it down a little. Let's take a look at the uh, Braille Editor for a moment. Again, you have the main toolbar across the top. File is your standard file and emboss utilities. Controls, controls actually will allow you to select text entry or six key entry when we go to do braille labels. Edit are your standard editing controls, cut, copy, paste, undo and redo, um, and the shortcut keys for those. These are your drawing tools. Now you note the line, the circle, the rectangle. These exact same tools are available over here on the left as buttons. Fills. We offer a, a number of fills that you can use when you're using these drawing tools on the left. Pen width. Again, when you're using the drawing tools, you have a choice of one, two, three, or four dots wide. Dot intensity is something we'll use when you go to emboss your graphic. And again, the shortcuts and the general help for the Braille Edit display part of the program. Well, the first thing you see you'd need to do for a graphic image like this is replace the print labels with Braille. So why don't we do that? Let's select the uh, eraser tool here. And we'll take out the X. And if you make a mistake, oops, I didn't want to do that, we can undo it, it'll put it back, or you can decide you want to redo it. Now let, let's put in a uh, text label in Braille. Here we brought up the text entry label box, and we want to make that a, a capital X. And if you're using the ASCII key entry method here, the cap letter sign is the comma, which is dot six in the US. So we'll do two commas and the letter X. When you hit OK, we simply 
Here we're placing the letter X. And now we'll continue to do the same for all the other labels. Here we had the number 5. Let's just erase that. And to do a number sign, it's pound E, I believe, to get the number 5. Now you can paste this in from a translator if you have translated labels already. Let's just, for an example, go to 6 key entry here for the next, and we're going to remove the 4 that was here. And when we go to do the label this time, now the mouse goes um, non-functioning in this particular box. This just happens to be a limitation of the uh, of the software uh, that, that this was developed with in the uh, .NET framework in Microsoft. So here, let's just put in our number sign, and we'll put in our 4. And then you have to hit the Tab key on the keyboard to highlight OK. Now when you hit OK, you can use the mouse to place your label. So we'll put the 4 over there. And let's erase these other two. Here's our Y. And I'm going to go back to the text controls because once you, you know these, it makes it kind of easy. So we'll go comma, comma, Y. And place that here. And the last one is the letter Z. So we'll get rid of the Z. And put in our comma, comma, Z. And we'll place that here. Now, if you want to take a, a look in the help, um, in this particular section, uh, we can uh, look at the uh, six key entry. And again, you know, there's several ways to get to it. But here is the six key in the index. And at the bottom of that is a keyboard chart. So if you're wondering what letter to press to get a particular dot combination, the National Braille Association has this wonderful graphic that we've embedded in the help file. So you can just come in here and see the letter X, and there's the six dot representation of it. That's convenient if you want to use the text entry. These other controls, incidentally, um, are the zoom. So if you want to zoom in a little bit to get a clearer picture, then uh, you can do that. And this is zoom out, or the drop down will let you go to a specific zoom ratio. And this takes you back to whole screen or full screen. This image is pretty much ready to emboss at this point. So to do that, uh, you know, we will continue with the emboss window. This is a conventional uh, emboss or printer window that comes up in your uh, Windows environment. Let's pick the Phoenix embosser first. And this is assuming in this tutorial that you've already followed the directions for setting up your embosser. You've loaded paper and you've set top of form. And once you're ready, you simply hit OK. That sends your final graphic to the embosser and check your results and see what you uh, find. That concludes this tutorial.